Yes, my friends, I have definitely been able to do many builds over the years, and several of them have been with Capo Racing. Now, today, I finally get to go and get started on my Capo Sixer 1, a 1.6 scale RC custom V-Heist model kit. Now, I pointed this out in the first video, but I think it's still funny to point it out in this one, because after six years, is it a coincidence that I get to put together a six scale called the Sixer One? I think it is. And let's go over here to check out the beautiful parts. Normally, you would have a picture of, a, of the model you're building right on the front of the box, but this time they are going into stealth mode for the Sixer One. In fact, you already know it's a samurai, but you don't get a paper instruction book. Oh no, in fact, you get to go back and download anything you want, PDF form, right onto the Google Drive that they have instructions instructions for you uh, to get them online. So this is like, for example, if you open up one here, this will go ahead and tell you what you're going to need for motors. Whoa, there we go. And you can see for brushless that if you go too crazy, it might actually do some damage. Now, I won't go into too much detail here because that is up to you once you get it. Am I sounding excited because this is the least expensive capo model that they have released? No, because as far as I understand, this is coming in at 980 US, that's what I was told. Uh, and I know I don't have a picture of it to show you, but it should be fantastic. Am I excited because they clearly label all of this? No, not at all, because that's what I expect from Capo. Or am I just simply excited because it comes with RC Sparks decals? Check that out, marketing partners. Right there with Deco and Fly Sky. Pretty cool. Deco makes some pretty awesome servos, very strong. And of course, Fly Sky uh, being radio manufacturers. Here is the decal sheet for the Sixer One. Beautiful. I think we're going to open up a video one here. Let's have a look here. No sound to these videos, hosted on YouTube. And we'll go through and basically illustrate everything that you need to do. Don't let this intimidate you. It looks a little bit like the matrix. Moving on, so here is the first shaft that has an E-clip that goes on. One of the things I want to note to you is when they're showing you the part numbers, look down in the corner. Because if they're showing you a part that's being dropped in, that's going to coincide to the bag number or you know the, the packaging that it's in already. Okay, so here is the beginning shaft that you gotta start looking for. I have to tell you, I went through everything looking for this shaft, everywhere, through every bag and every box, and I was looking and looking, and like, where the heck is it? And I'll tell you, it is right here, and it is right there, if you guys were looking for it, it took me, I don't know, longer, 10 minutes longer than it should have. I'm probably exaggerating by about eight minutes, but still, there it is, that's how we start. Look how much I love you guys. A totally new tabletop just for the build. So, uh, first part to go on, of course, is the E-clip. And normally I have an E-clip tool that I use to snap these little guys on because it makes it so much easier. Uh, but much like uh, small E-clips, I have lost it. So we're going to be using pliers. That was easy. I needed a tool for that. Okay, at 28 seconds in comes this little collar. And this collar is called what? DP 5.5 by 3 by 3 DP Let's see here Basically A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P Q R S T I don't have a U I don't have a V W X Y Z and then DP right here This is for the body though this is definitely not a collar so, no other bag is labeled. DP. This is the wrong website for that. I think it is inside this bag and it's stuck inside this spring. Does it fit? Does it fit? Does it fit? It does. So, I'm going to go with that. Then it's calling for a short spring. Right here. 
Okay, my first piece from the styrofoam other than the rod. So it's my second piece. Apparently you want to have the longer side on the inside, like that. And then another spring. Here's where I should lose my E-clip. Nice. Except the camera is being held up with my pliers. No. There it is. Then over to where beside the axles, get to take out one of the casts for the engine and transmission. Take this, turn it, and then slide this through like that. We'll just set this piece off to the side. Okay, then time to bust into the gears, which is gear number one right here. Here is the new shaft. Two uh, E-clip areas here, that's how you can identify it, to the one on this side. I've put one drive pin through already. Then I'm gonna take that bearing, or pardon me, the gear, slide it on, and then I can put the other E-clip on. The next pin is a two, two by eight, which means it's gonna be shorter than the one you just put on there. And then another E-clip. Just trying to get this clip on the end here for about the last five minutes. Get on there. I wish I had a tool for this. Get on there. And then the tiniest little washer spacer goes on the end of that gear. No dryer, just the washer. Bearing goes on the end where the spacer is. Then another small washer goes on the end of that. And now check out this cool piece. Looks like a pulley. So you wanna add grease everywhere, but on the actual pulley teeth. You don't wanna add any grease on the inside of that. Now two bearings have to go on the inside of this. Capo. So one there, and then one on the inside. Yes, my precious, it's so beautiful. I now pronounce you capo and hobbyist. Then another one of those schnazzy little washers and a bearing on the outside. Ta-da! In this nifty bag, you'll see what looks like to be some battery holders and some beadlock rings, and there is a little belt on the inside. Huh, so cool! And of course re-enter the piece we had been working on. Gonna mount this right here and so amazing. The things that Capo comes up with is always blowing my mind. Okay, next piece. Okay, so this center one right here. Okay, so here it is, and here's the piece where I put a bearing in on either side, and I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that down. Gonna take another one of these small washers, right there. With that washer on, we're gonna put on one bearing. Ah, ah, ah. And then get it, if you buy now, you don't get to have one, we will send you a free bearing kit there as well. So we get two bearings. And then on the other side, we get this funky looking piece right here. Look at this. Nice, looks like some sort of clutch assembly. How do we place that on there, magic video? Tell me. I wanna follow the video so I can make a video there we are. Who's commenting? Are you even watching right now? Am I doing this build video all by myself? Let me know how many people are watching by actually making a comment. Lots of YouTube channels get tons of comments. Oh, totally, that's gonna be correct. That's gonna, how it, that's gonna be how it shifts back and forth from gear to gear. Awesome. Another little washer right on the end. Then we get this beautiful piece where we got to have more bearings on the inside and then on the outside and then slide it down. 
except that last part was wrong. It really should be turned around and just, just seeing if you're paying attention. That's all I'm doing here. Just me, myself and I building a great new capo ride. Seeing if you're paying attention. Looks like a little bit of a Christmas tree. Little brass end that comes in here, slides on the end, and then we get another bearing. -la 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 -la. This whole section goes right in and gets seated. Now you can see, I'm gonna stop this so it's not distracting you in the background. When I seated it in there, I put it into that shifting fork that I built earlier in the first step. Yay, and the crowd goes wild. This bearing has to go on the outside and it seats a little bit smoother. Wonderful. I'm hunting. I think I found them right on the end here. Yep, two bearing clamps. So it must be one here and one here. Okay, so here it's showing putting those double clamps on right here. And then in the corner, it says M2 by six and it's in the S bag. So is that so? M2 by six, beautiful. Normally I leave builds until the winter time or the fall season, but you guys have been so good and putting up with the Big Derby and the TTC and YouTube Gold and all that fun stuff. I figured a good old down home build would be uh, appreciated by now. So please, like I said earlier, leave me a comment or a like click at, at least to let me know that you are watching. Look at that, isn't that spectacular? Here is the first servo I'm going to use because it's time to start installing the shifting servo. I'm going to use the deco servo that I have. Ta-da! It's nice and aluminum, very strong. It's going to mount in sideways as you can see, just like that. I'm going to drop in the steering horn, horn and the arm. I got to cut off the top of the steering horn and I'll basically leave it in a neutral position for now. Sweet, check it out. So there is the armature and the trimmed horn. Notice that I haven't uh, done the screw up in the servo yet uh, because I gotta make sure to have it in a neutral position when I plug everything in and fire it up for the first time. Okay, instructions are calling for a first parts tree. So that's what we're seeing, steering wheel here. So the piece off to the side of the steering wheel in the bottom corner, this one highlighted, this one and that one. That should be pretty simple. People must wonder over the years, you know, do builds get easier for me on YouTube? And the answer is simply no. I always enjoy doing the builds, but I'm always a little bit nervous of how things are gonna turn out, especially if there's no instruction book, right? But in a way there is an instructions, you just have to follow what you're doing. Now you might notice I used some clippers there instead of a razor blade to cut that off. That makes it a little bit easier for me, plus I can just file those ends real simple and it'll be a great piece. Perfect. Check out this little piece that I took off the parts tree. Look at this. This is actually a cover for the armature of the servo. Look at that, for the shifting arm. That way nothing ever interferes with it when you're shifting. These little blurbs that come up on the screen sure are helpful, especially if, if you're trying to, you know, first time builder or you really want this to work smooth. They're saying that this little end cap here should have a circular file to make sure everything is smooth and that nothing is kind of getting caught on the inside. And as you'll see there, everything is looking nice and smooth and filed out. And then all I have to do is put in two screws. No, 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 no. Now I get to do one of my favorite parts. Check this out. Does anybody recognize what a piece like this would be for? Down comes the piece. Yeah. So here's the information. Even though you can't read it, I'll change it. It's actually the video that changes it. <laughs> Ooh, look at the nice little pulley pinion. That must be this one right here. 
Great innovation. Well, I know it's not like they invented this, but I love seeing new ways to set up radio control uh, trucks, you know, like all sorts of innovation. It's an open concept hobby as far as I'm concerned, but it's great to see this in a crawler. This next segment brought to you by Loctite and your need to use it. Go blue and you'll make it through. Make sure your thread lock is working for you. You don't want to have your grub screws backing out on the trail because that'll be a huge pain in your butt and you'll be having a season ruiner that day or at least a day ender, right? So you don't want that. So I'm going to take a very small amount of Loctite thread lock Put it on the end of the grub screw that's going to hold that pinion uh, gear in place. All right, here's where I can finally install the motor onto the uh, actual belt drive system here. Look at this. And then, of course, this motor plate is going to act as a tensioner. Check this out. As soon as I bring this up, it tightens up that belt, right? So you can see it's all nice and snug. So if you're worried about mud or something getting in there, I've got no experience with this at all, and really I'm making this up as I go, but I imagine being able to tighten that up is certainly gonna help. Is that cool or what? An actual belt drive off your motor for the transmission. Just beautiful. Right there, if we tension that up. Does it fit in there properly? It does, it does. So the tighter that goes, the tighter the belt gets. Got it, so it's not an adjustable tension system. I think. <laughs> I love learning about these at the same time I'm trying to show you. As long as I had this in the right position, which is up here, when I start to tension it down, it naturally pulls it that way. Sweet. See, with this bracket in, and of course this being up where it is, it locks it in place. That belt is nice and tight, but not too tight. So it's, you know, like just to the spot where I'd be like, oh, I wonder if it's gonna be stretching at all while I use it, but it really, time will tell, I guess. That'll be it. That is so cool. Okay, here is a decorative piece. All I'm gonna do is take it and bend right along the edges. Ah! Gotta be more careful than that, apparently. Bending along the edges. And then, of course, this is gonna go and slide right in the bottom, right here. Ta-da! Now, off camera, I'll go take a few minutes just to make sure that's nice and straight, but you get the idea. What a beautiful work of art, guys. I love it. You can see I've almost lost my fan shroud, but the reason I'm here is that a lot of you will notice that I didn't dollop on huge amounts of grease. If anything, you'll just see a shine of a water-resistant silicone that I've put on there uh, that's going to dry and leave a film on there that is going to keep any kind of rocks and grit from actually sticking to it. So no big dollops of grease to get stuck into the, to the pulley system there just some silicone spray that's going to keep it nice and lubricated and then around to the other side and I get to pull out the end cap and then I imagine this will be for the top yes they're very thin guys I would imagine uh, for capo to keep the cost down uh, you're going to want to be careful when you're screwing in these screws because I imagine the thread would come out very simple so again with the thread lock and just being careful hand turning them not with a drill okay so I pull it put it on the front yes and then this came up electrical equipment cables should be discharged from the top and I thought, oh shoot, I should put some motor wires on my motor. <laughs> so I did that off camera. I always leave my motor wires long because I never know uh, where the ESC is gonna be located in the vehicle. So there is the servo wire for the shifter and there are the cables. One cool thing after another, this whole piece you'd think would just line up, but look at that. It actually has holes and like it clamps everything together. Then you do it up with the screw. Like, like if I got that there, there, there's the screw hole and then there it is up there. So everything is clamped once it's all screwed up, screwed together. 
And then this beauty obviously is a little bit hollow. It has those exit area uh, holes on the back, or single hole, I should say, for the wires. Hard to do with one hand, but you get the general idea it's going to stick up here. You can't really tell much is different other than there is a nut and bolt right here. Another nut and bolt there. And then on the other side, guess what? Two more nuts and bolts. Amazing. Then the valve cover up top. Put some screws into that. And then I had to shave down the gas or the oil cap a little bit, the gas cap, the oil cap to get it into that hole. And it looks like I could have shaved it just a little bit more. Um, and the way I did that was just with my file. So what I'm talking about is the post that had to slide into the, to the, um, that pre-made hole right there. So I just had to, to file the post a little bit skinnier. Well, there you go. You're probably asking me, why didn't you paint the top of that? It's going to look terrible, blah, blah, blah. Well, I encourage you guys to paint things the way you want when you get them. That's no problem at all. I have a feeling that when I drop this engine, and I'm not even close to being done, into the actual samurai it's going to look fantastic if i want to take this top off and paint it then i will because it's just four screws but guys that brings us to the end of the first assembly video for the uh capo one six scale samurai now you've seen the inside motor and transmission choice what do you think of the outside guys is this something you guys would ever be into building yourselves and in fact have you ever heard of Capo Racing before? If you have heard of Capo, which one of their models would you most likely build? Let me know in the comments section down below, and we will see you guys in the next episode of RC Adventures, where we go out and kick butt again with the radio control hobby. Now get outside and have fun with RC, or stay inside and build yourself one.